there, the demand is there, the order is there, and if they can ramp up the supply, and they've been investing heavily in, in their equipment and expanding their fleet. And So even if they're not growing as investors, you're going to see um, improved returns on your invested capital, because even if your return is staying the same, the capital base is shrinking, you owning more and more of the company over time without the company necessarily having to have excessive growth that shoots the lights out. So I really like that. I was actually Hello everyone, welcome back. So we are here with one of the Fin Me Up app mentors, Josh Foyun. And I personally love all his content, all the educational content and, and insights he provides. He recently did a post on the app, his top five picks for the for the year, uh, five JSE picks. I've also done mine. There's a few other mentors who also did theirs. Uh, remember, it's not advice. It's just, you know, stock picking. You can't do one year picking and also... Who knows how it might perform it it may, may go down it may go up um, it's just it's just fun and also for you to get some insights and to get to understand more companies so to get my picks you can go read it on the app we're going to talk about uh, Josh for Yunes. we're going to talk about three of his five picks and uh, if you want to see the other two and more insights on the companies you can go check him out on the fin me up app uh, the link is in the description uh, Josh, thanks for being here and thanks for all your valuable content. I appreciate it and I love learning from you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on the on the channel, Hugo. It's great to be able to to chat to the users and just share some of my insights and my thought processes that have gone into my picks. So, yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. So uh, let's let's get into it. Okay, cool. So the first company, which is also a company I like um, and is also part of my five, and that's Master Drilling. Um, please, please tell us why master drilling from, from your side. Okay, cool. So before I get stuck into the pixel, I'll just quickly chat you through my, my thought process and the themes I was kind of trying to capture with, with my picks that I've chosen this year. Um, so I think if we're just looking at the economy as a whole, I think going into 2023, I think there's going to be a strong focus on value, um, investing over growth. Um, and this is mainly due to the Fed in America, um, in the last 10 years, we've been in a big cycle of quantitative easing. Interest rates have been very low, so that's really helped growth stocks. But the narrative's kind of changed um, in 2022. And I think a lot of investors kind of felt that and saw stock prices go down because of this. Um, so we've now entered kind of this phase of quantitative tightening with the Fed trying to reduce their balance sheet. So I've kind of kept that in mind as a theme with my picks. So I am looking more at value um, Yeah, with my picks. So... That's kind of the first theme at play um, that I want to capture with my picks. Next is the narrative of large caps versus small caps. So I think as, as retail investors, a lot of our competitive advantage can lie in having access to these small cap companies. A lot of the big funds, they don't have, they're not able to invest into these small cap companies just because of the size of the fund. Obviously, if they had to take a significant stake in the small cap, they could ultimately end up taking ownership of the company depending on the size of the fund. So I think as as retail investors, we kind of have access to these small caps and there's less analyst coverage. So just based on that, there's more opportunity for a mispricing versus your large cap stock. So I do kind of tend to gravitate more towards your small and mid cap stock picks. Um, and yeah, so I think I think just playing into that, I was also looking at some, some data from the MSCI small cap index relative to the large cap index and small caps are actually trading at like multi-decade high discounts if you look at the relative PEs of the index. So also just trying to capture that theme. Um, so most of my picks are small caps. Um, there is one mid cap pick which we'll chat about. And then yeah, I'm also focused on finding companies that are returning capital to shareholders. So going into 2023, I think that's going to be a big thing for investors is actually having managers that are returning capital to shareholders so this can either be done in the form of let's say share buybacks or companies that are actually paying out dividends so definitely shying away from companies that are not returning capital to shareholders and are diluting shareholders so for me that's kind of a big a big no so that's kind of another theme that you'll see in my picks and then the last two things that i'm kind of focused on are balance sheet health of a company so given that interest rates are so high, I mean, we saw the Reserve Bank, I think, rise interest rates six, six consecutive times last year. Um, so that's really going to impact companies severely. If you have a lot of debts on your balance sheet, that's going to 
really impact your your bottom line if you're having to pay off this debt that's just getting more and more expensive so looking for companies that have a healthy balance sheet low debt and then the final thing for me is cash flow generation i'm looking at companies that are generating cash flow uh, because often we can see growing profits but that may not necessarily translate into free cash flow for us as investors which i think is important so those are kind of the core themes that i was just looking at when making my picks um yeah yeah that's great I just, just I can jump in there i mean i'm also currently a big fan especially of jse mid caps and small caps same as you uh, and some of our small and mid caps you know eventually the share price catches up yeah. with the actual business eventually it could take 20 years yeah. knows. but we have some proper good small caps and mid caps on the jse you know, some of them doing buybacks, some of them paying dividends already, some of them growing internationally. Uh, so also love the space. So let's, one of them is uh, master drilling yeah. and it's, it's quite small, but it's international and it's got big moats, but over to you when I want to, want to know why. Okay, cool. So just for the, the listeners that don't know much about master drilling, essentially what master drilling do is raise boring and they provide drilling services to predominantly mining companies. So. If you are a mining company, let's say Anglo Gold, uh, and you need someone to drill a mining shaft, you'd hire a company like Master Drilling. So they drill um, tunnels, shafts, ventilation shafts. So they're kind of providing drilling services to predominantly the mining industry. Um, So what I like about Master Drilling is if we look at the mining industry, um, a lot of our surface level commodities have already been mined. Um, I guess as time goes on, um, commodities are going to become more scarce and harder to mine. It's going to be harder to reach these commodities lower under the ground. And that's going to play into master drilling's benefits. Um, when it comes to exploration, companies are going to, start have to, going to start having to look deeper and deeper into the ground. And this will greatly benefit master drilling. So I don't see their, their moats going away anytime soon. If anything, I think their competitive advantage is only going to grow and grow as our commodities become more and more scarce. So that's one thing I like about master drilling. And then if we, if we think about, I guess, the mining industry, buying, buying a miner, if you had to go and buy a mining company, it's quite a speculative investment. You're kind of making essentially a bet on a commodity price. If you're buying, let's say, a gold miner, their returns are ultimately driven by the prevailing gold price. Um, so I like master drilling because it's a less speculative investment that offers investors kind of an entry into the sector, but at a less less of a risk. So it's kind of like the, the narrative of selling shovels during a gold rush. Master drilling are supplying the equipment and the expertise for this industry. Um, so they're not they're not exposed to one mine, one commodity, one country, like you mentioned, they globally diversified. So that's kind of what I like about master drilling. Because if we think about, I mean commodity prices, they, they can be extremely volatile and any big macroeconomic events can really result in a, an overnight swing in a commodity price. I mean, if we look back to last year, um, we saw energy stocks like, gold, uh, like oil, natural gas and coal completely skyrocketing. And this was ultimately due to the Russia-Ukraine war um, creating this supply shock in energy markets. So, I mean, as investors, we, it's really difficult to predict these um, macroeconomic events so you could have easily um, been invested in another commodity but the narrative can quickly change based on these global events I mean take a look at steel and iron prices during COVID um, China completely essentially shut down the economy and they are like the largest consumer of iron and steel so we saw really suppressed iron and steel prices so if you owned a an iron or steel stock, you really would not have fared well. Um, and this would have been difficult to predict. So I was kind of looking for to give to gain exposure to the mining sector, but at a less speculative route. So that was kind of my main reason for picking master drilling. Um, so like you mentioned, they are yeah. geographically diversified, which I like. About a third of their revenue comes from Africa, another third from South America, and then the remaining portion from the USA and other countries, which I really like. So it's also acting as a RAND hedge. Um, I mean, if we look at the RAND long term, we're seeing a lot of RAND depreciation. But if you own a company like Master Drilling and you're earning in dollars, you're earning in 
in euros, this is going to benefit you in the long term as well. So it's nice to also have that that slight rand hedge element to it as well, which I also like. Yeah, and I mean, you know, also what I like about master drilling is they they've got a massive order backlog. Uh, you know, it shows that the demand is massive, so they just need to keep up with the demand. Yeah, and that's a great problem to have. I mean, yeah. The money is there, the demand is there, the order is there. And if they can ramp up the supply, and they've been investing heavily in, in their equipment and expanding yeah. their fleet, and we'll start seeing the benefits from that. Uh, so, you know, if they can just constantly increase the supply and, and fit the demand and keep the demand going years ago, it's it's definitely going to be a, a great one to, to watch. Um, the, the problem with them is their liquidity. Uh, as most small caps and mid caps yeah. on the JSE, the liquidity isn't great. So, you know, in, in the US, when you see a company beat earnings after earnings after earnings massively, you'll see the share price go up 20% and, you know, massive liquidity. Where here in, in the JSE, you know, nothing might happen, but that's, in my opinion, it could be a good time. If they continue to deliver outstanding results, it's a great time to accumulate before, who knows, a corporate comes in later or, you know, someone buys them or whatever. But, yeah. Definitely a company to watch. Yeah. The yeah. second company is also, is, do you want to add anything on Master Drilling? No, I think nothing else to add. I mean, I think we've, we've covered most yeah. of it. Also, I mean, the valuation looks attractive. They're not, they're not demanding big returns. They don't need massive growth to, to meet investor expectations. Mm -hmm. I mean, their PE is only about five, so there's not huge growth priced in. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they delivered, I think it was about 30% earnings growth uh, the last report, I mean, yeah. even about 40, I'll just have to double check. And the outlook that they gave was positive. Um, and I won't be surprised if they pay a nice dividend uh, at the end of this year. Yeah. Anyway, so next company is also a company covered by other analysts who also like this company. So keen to get your takes. Uh, just a reminder, today we're going to be looking at three companies. Josh picked five companies to view all five and other insights on these companies. It is available on the Up app. You can just search for his article, uh, Josh, for you. So the second company is Origent. Please tell us why you are bullish on Origent for this year. Okay, so there's, there's also a, a few core themes I'm trying to, to capture here with Argent. Um, so as, as we mentioned earlier, looking at... Um, COVID in China, um, there was big, big drops in iron and steel prices globally. Um, so this would have also impacted companies like Argent. Argent largely deals in, in steel and metal and iron products. They engage in manufacturing, steel trading. Um, so this kind of drop um, due to COVID would have definitely taken a knock on the industrials and manufacturing stocks. So um, if we look at China now, we are kind of seeing some increased investor confidence. Um, they're opening up um, their economic activity. I mean, they're, we're starting to see some travel out of China. So I think this could kind of be a catalyst in, in the manufacturing and industrial sector if we're seeing this uptick in economic activity. Um, there's also been some policies from the government where they're kind of only using local suppliers for certain construction projects and tender projects, which companies like PPC was also a big beneficiary of this last year. Um, we saw their, their share price shoot up at when this was announced um, because the government essentially said we're banning all imported cement for, for local projects. So if we kind of see this narrative um, playing out into the products that Argent can offer, um, this could also benefit them greatly. Um, and they kind of, they also, again, they are micro caps, so there is this big liquidity risk. Um, so we're not seeing massive trading volumes, which obviously is going to impact short term valuations um, and short term prices. And they're doing buybacks. Um, yeah, they've so. been doing buybacks. They, they announced that they want to continue with the buybacks. They are paying a dividend. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of it, uh, yeah. especially buybacks when, when it's an attractive valuation and the PE is below five. They also gave positive guidance, um, since the operations are doing well uh, in Europe as well. Uh, also basically around edge to, to some extent. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so an interesting company to watch. Yeah. I think, I think very, very good 
capital management that is being employed there. They're buying back shares at, at opportune times. Um, they're not buying when their shares look expensive, which which I like. Um, I was I did a back at the end of calculation. I think they purchased um, 3.3 million shares um, last year, and they currently have 56 million shares outstanding. So that's a massive portion that they're buying back. So even if they're not growing as investors, you're going to see um, improved returns on your invested capital because even if your return is staying the same, the capital base is shrinking. You owning more and more of the company over time without the company necessarily having to have excessive growth that shoots the lights out. So I really like that. I was actually reading through their um, most recent integrated reports and they, in the CEO statement, he essentially said that they've implemented a policy that from um, 1 October 2021, they are committed to returning 30% of all after-tax earnings to shareholders, either in the form of a buyback and a dividend. So we've been seeing that with the buybacks and they announced an interim dividend for the first time last year since 2018. So I think as shareholders, well, you're going to be seeing um, some returns either in the form of a buyback or or, or, or dividends. So there is that kind of um, yield that you're getting. So less uncertainty if management is actually returning capital. They're not um, investing significantly um when there is uncertainty, but they're kind of being prudent and they're returning capital to shareholders, which I think is really nice. Well, uh, that's actually a great article we can write about on the app, uh, on the FinMap app, and that is the importance or why buybacks are so great uh, as well at the yeah. right time. Uh, so, you know, okay, so Origin really undervalued quality businesses. So, you know, returning shares to uh, returning money to shareholders in various forms I also one of my my friends who's also he really knows what what he's doing and he's also quite bullish on origin saying you know they are really doubling down on their quality businesses and getting rid of the businesses yeah. that, that aren't doing well and in times like these that is what you want so you know with with both master drilling and origin uh, in my opinion the, the the downside is limited you yeah. know you, you never know you never know that's why diversification is key and doing your own research is key, uh, but definitely one to watch. So let's get into your final pick, uh, or three out of the five, the other two ones again, available on the app. And the third one we're going to talk about, you can introduce yourself. Okay, cool. So my final pick is, is Mondi. Um, I'm sure many of you may have used their products before. So Mondi are a global leader in packaging and paper. So if you've ever bought a ream of printer paper, there's a strong likelihood you've used Mondi's products. Um, what kind of gives them a competitive advantage is that they are vertically integrated, so they control the whole supply chain. So they own their own forests, they own the pulps, they own the moles, and then they ultimately are able to have these cost savings because they control the whole supply chain and the whole production process. So they're really able to control products and control costs. So this you'll actually kind of see if you're looking at their margins. So they are quite a high margin business for what is not a very exciting or uh, product. I mean, it's packaging and paper, so you wouldn't expect it to be a high margin industry, but because of their vertical integration, they're really able to control costs and still have this high margin product. So that's kind of an intro to Mondi. It is quite a defensive industry, packaging and paper. Um, I think also as we, see increased e-commerce, um, there'll be more packaging materials required. So there is potentially some growth um, here as we see e-commerce becoming the norm. I mean, even if you, let's say ordering from Checker 6060, uh, everything's coming in like a paper bag. So that's kind of the products Mondi supplies, um, card corrugated cardboard boxes, paper, printer paper. So it's quite a defensive industry. Um, so my core, my core idea around investing in Mondi was I felt the market had a bit of an overreaction um, to, to the Russia-Ukraine war last year. So Mondi dropped roughly 30% last year, um, and this is ultimately because they had some operations in Russia. Um, about 20% of their, their revenue and earnings came from, from Russia, and the market had a a significant reaction to this and we saw the share price drop um, massively so kind of I've been looking at Europe as a whole and I was listening to an 
investor conference from Sean Peach at Grand Moore Fund Managers. And he was kind of saying that they did a survey and roughly 95% of analysts think that Europe are going to enter into a recession. So if we think about what this means, this likely means that a recession is already priced in into these European stocks. Um, so the downside is quite limited because if we see some recovery in Europe, um, then this would kind of be a surprise to analysts because expectations are very low. Whereas if there is a recession and this war drags on energy prices stay high in Europe, it wouldn't be much of a surprise because everyone's already expecting this to happen. So I think there has kind of been an overreaction from the market and there is some opportunity for a recovery in Europe. Um, so that's kind of the core theme that I'm looking at. Um, Mondi's also, they've kind of been, like we mentioned with Argent, getting rid of these operations that are not necessarily doing well with the Russia-Ukraine war. They are in the process of disposing of um, their mills in Russia. Um, and this is kind of, the sales currently underway, it hasn't finalized, but this is going to bring in about $1.5 billion of cash in euros. Um, so I think there is a strong likelihood that investors could see a special dividend uh, when the sale goes through if, if management don't have other plans for this capital. So it's possible special dividends which could offer a nice yield yeah. to investors and yeah, good business, not trading at undemanding valuations. I mean, even in 2022, with these recessionary fears, they still had, had strong earnings. Um, we didn't really see them being affected. So it was quite a defensive industry, but the market still had this very negative reaction. Very interesting. Uh, great picks. I love them. Uh, Going to learn more about them. And I'm sure you'll be posting about them more uh, as the year goes on uh, on the FinNav app. Make sure you are subscribed. More mentors coming with their picks uh, over the next few weeks. During the year, on each Friday, we'll also do, be doing market reps, which is covering the most important stock market news that happened during the week from directors dealings to company results to big announcements whatever it is every Friday and we'll be interviewing our mentors like Josh during the year. Uh, for more you can go check out the Film Up app, play the quiz, test your knowledge. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks Josh.